Wait, doesn't this look familiar? This is the Logitech MX Mechanical Mini, a 75% keyboard. It looks eerily similar to the Keychron K3, and at surface level, they are exact copies of each other. But if you look closer, this keyboard could be the beginning of a whole new trend in keyboard land. Is Logitech attempting to beat the K3 in a fist-to-fist -fist fight, or are they going after a completely new market with this product? What if the new era of keyboards is for the everyday office worker and not gamers? Here we have the Logitech MX Mechanical Mini in the box. This is the Tactile Quiet Edition. So I love the packaging here. This is probably some of the best packaging I've ever seen. Because instead of plastic, it's got tissue paper. And that just means it is environmentally friendly. The best. It also comes with your Logibolt receiver. Not a unifying receiver. It won't work with a unifying receiver, actually. Which is actually a poo-poo for people that have Logitech unifying stuff already already like mx master 3 so once you connect that you can just slide this on button right here boop on same thing as the k3 with the buttons on the top right and then the USB-C on here is on the right but on the k3 it's actually straight in the middle and the k3 you can switch between mac mode and windows mode but this it seems like it's just universally going to work with everything no matter what mode it's in because there's no way to change the mode your keycaps already have Windows and Mac functions, same with your function row here, your F row, although I think this is definitely more Mac than Windows. So it's Mac first, Windows second, and everything else after that. I've never used a Chromebook, so I don't really know what to say about that. But I, I like this. I like that it has everything. You don't need to change out extra keycaps. They don't need to include extra keycaps, like how Keychron will make you change it out. Also, it's got a like gray and gray color scheme. No orange button which I sort of appreciate but you know no significant Logitech logoing other than at the top so it's got a forehead the K3 doesn't have a forehead the K3 is slim it's small it's a little bit sleeker than this from the side and from far away it's extremely difficult to tell the difference unless you really knew what you were looking for this one is much sturdier super sturdy actually no flex at all the first version of the K3 is the one that I got it had a significant amount of flex. They're on V2 right now, and I think they said they fixed it, but I don't know about that. So low profile. It's nice. I think it's going to be the future. Smaller keyboards are going to be the future. So I'm on the Logitech website. They're selling the MX Mechanical in the full size version. You can see here if you need that numpad. So this is basically a K1, and then you can get the mini version, which is the one that we have today, which is very similar to the K3. So I guess say copied both of them Ooh, a lot of inspiration took a lot of inspiration oh gosh the big one is $219.99 that is a lot considering k5 is the one that we're comparing it to there's so many of them it's so confusing so the k5 is $90 and the MX Mechanical full size is $220. The Mini is $200. Why the heck is it so expensive? Oh, wow. K3 is $80 on Amazon or on their website. Actually, on their website, it's a little bit cheaper. But you have a hot swap option. You have a RGB option. Very similar options. Completely different pricing, although they're sort of similar. So build quality of the MX Mechanical Mini is significantly better. So much better. You just cannot break this thing. Right out of the box, it feels like an extremely solid keyboard. You can tell the difference is from this edge, this bezel, this aluminum plate right here at the very top. It's about two millimeters thick and all your switches are attached. Sure, it adds a little bit of height, but it makes it really sturdy. This thing will last you at least, gotta be like five years. You know, when you go to an office space and you look at people's keyboards and they're they're pretty historical looking, they're pretty old looking and they've, they've had it for like five to 10 years and it's a membrane keyboard and it's doing great. Well, this is mechanical. It's not even membrane, it's mechanical, it's sturdy, 
and it's probably going to last you longer than five years if you take care of it. Uh, the battery life might not do so well after a long time, but they said if you don't have the backlight on, you can get a couple months out of this thing. You can get 10 months out of this thing without the backlight on. With the backlight on, you've reduced the 10 months to 15 days, which is like barely anything. So I'm going to plug it in so we get to see it work. Plug it in, turn on instantly white backlight turns on and it indicates your battery level so i think this is a really cool part i'm just gonna step away put it down for a while and it's supposed to turn off and then when i bring my hands close to it it's supposed to turn on again it's a really cool feature and it saves battery life and it's 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 awesome. I really like that feature. It's one of my favorite features about this keyboard. It's like sort of gimmicky, but fun. You know, does that make it cost double the K3? It's not worth paying for <laughs> that specific feature, but the durability of this, I think it is worth paying for. You do have eight degree feet, which is different than the Keychron. The Keychron K3 has two levels of adjustable feet that you can choose from. The first is six degrees and the second is nine degrees on the MX Mech Mini. You only have eight degrees, so they picked the middle ground. Yes, they didn't want to pay for all those extra feats. Maybe they will in a future edition, but for now, you only get one. A nice long strip of rubber on the bottom and then two smaller pieces on the feet. So it's not going to slip pretty good for switches they do not tell you anything about the switches but you can just take off the keycaps and you're like oh that's a kale low profile chalk switch with the mx stem so that's what <laughs> that's what it is logitech uses kale low profile switches they will not tell you that on their sales page but you can very easily visibly see the kale logo yeah, so logitech doesn't offer you the hot swap but it makes sense you know, an office person, when they get their keyboard, they're not going to think, oh, how do I mod my keyboard today? Let me put lube on them. Let me change the keycaps. Let me tape up my stabilizers and do all that stuff. No, the everyday office person, they're just going to do this. Plug in, put on desk, turn on, and then they're just gonna start typing away. Stabilizers, I think stabilizers are like an exact copy here. Logitech's never made a mechanical keyboard keyboard before but the moment that they do for some reason look at the side of the k3 here caps lock here has these bars supporting them like stabilizers but they're not really stabilizers and then you look over here tab and then caps lock look at that look at that wire it has a wire so they took a lot of inspiration such as that and then if you look under the stabilizers okay you look under the stabilizers you look under each one of these big keys and they implemented stabilizers that are compatible with cross-shaped stems hmm so inspiration maybe they got some inspiration there as well so connectivity was super easy as you saw you also have bluetooth so you can connect up to three devices Keychron only has bluetooth they're about the same mostly everything with bluetooth can connect with three devices i think that's pretty universal i think it's time to upgrade it it's not as upgradable as a k3 because it's not hot swap but you can still do a bunch of simple things for a super affordable price i think it's like less than 30 dollars for everything that we're gonna do today and it's gonna be awesome i've really considered using this as like my actual keyboard because it's so cool but i might just use it with my macbook and stow it into the backpack i've got all my supplies everything is less than 30 dollars they're also listed in the description down below if you are interested so this is the new feature coast profile keycap set these are pbt double shot keycaps they won't have the shine through but they're not gonna have this nasty oil grind that you see on your keyboards also i have the air 60 set so i can't change all of my keys and not all of them will work either which is really unfortunate. I did try this before, but the space bar is not the same size. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but the space bar isn't the same size. The left shift is not the same size. So I'm going to change out the keys that I would most often use, which are the alphas and the arrows. Also, I, I hope it looks good. I'd be really disappointed if it looked jank. The Air 75 Coast keycaps would probably be a kabillion times better. And 
can fit this whole look a lot better too. Okay, quick look. The original key halves are quite thin. You can see the shine through happening here with the Q. They are cross shaped and they look just like Ekron's key caps. Really not much of a difference other than the font. Very thin, very grimy, not a huge fan. So I think that's all I'll be changing. If I change the numbers using the 60% keycaps, you'll start to see that the sub legends are not the right symbol under it. I think that's all. I will be linking the 75% set down below so it's more accurate. But keep in mind, you can't change all of your keycaps since they are not the same size and don't have the same uh, stabilizers too. But if you do it like this, it doesn't look too different. You can see there's no shine through, but it's white. So it's really easily visible. These keycaps, the Air 75 Coast PBT, they're only $20. Super, super affordable. They're in stock and they'll ship pretty soon. If you are interested in getting that, you can get that. So second thing we're going to do will be just to quickly mod the stabilizer since, you know, they sound like this. They've got some rattle to them. It's going to be a super quick fix. A syringe full of dielectric grease. I'll also link these things down below too. And it's super affordable. With the K3, since it's hot swap, you can just pull the switch out and then take the entire stabilizer out. But with the Logitech Op Mech Mini, you can't do that. You're just going to find the places that tend to move and rattle when you're typing or when your keycap's going up and down. And you're just going to put lube there. Not too much though, or you'll gunk up the thing needs a little more so i do recommend like trying it a little at a time and don't go all ham with it and go like ah, i'm going in don't do anything crazy like that that's how you over lube for the caps and the right shifts you can put lube right there in that small crevice just a little bit so that when that wire moves it has less room to rattle into and just put it back on If you like this video, check out my other videos on Keychron's keyboards right here. I think you'll really like them.